Avatar The Last Airbender. I mean, where do you even begin? Why don't firebenders' clothes burn? What would happen if the moon really were to disappear? And how is it that this cabbage merchant is so darn successful? Probably some sort of embezzlement scheme. Who knows? But my biggest question of all is about Appa. He's this gigantic buffalo thing with six legs and zero wings, and yet he can fly? I mean, even if he can airbend, are we just supposed to believe that he can just float around weightlessly through the air? Are we supposed to take that as fact? Or is it pure niction? Now hold on, let me address the giant sky bison in the room here, folks. I know that Avatar The Last Airbender is based in a fantasy world, and I recognize that it's obviously not claiming that something like this is possible in real life. But Avatar has time and time again proven that they're not just making it up as they go along. When it comes to bending, there are clear and established rules in place that govern how this whole thing works. In general, a bender can't really manipulate an element to do something that it wouldn't be capable of doing in reality. A waterbender, for instance, can turn water into ice because water can turn into ice IRL. But they wouldn't be able to turn water into something like, I don't know, bubble gum. And a skilled earthbender can bend metal if it contains trace amounts of the earth that it was extracted from. But they wouldn't be able to bend something like clouds. So to answer this one, we're gonna need to combine our real world science with the fictional science of airbending. The only difference between air in the real world and air in the fictional world is that in the show, air can actually be directed. It can be manipulated by the benders. So what we're here to find out today is, would that be enough to make Appa fly? We know from the episode The Firebending Masters that flying bison were indeed the first airbenders, and that they fly by controlling the air currents that exist around them. But how exactly could that work? Could it even work in the first place? The obvious option here would be for Appa to blast air at himself up from below and launch himself into the sky. But think about how much force that would take. According to Newton's third law of motion, every action has an equal and opposite reaction, which means that Appa would need to hit himself with a blast of air at least equal to his own weight in order to lift off the ground. I guess you could call that one an opposite reaction. Next is where we would hit a roadblock in our research. Seeing as Appa is a fictional animal, we would have no idea how much he weighs. But if we dig deeply enough into the show, the answer can actually be found. Remember in book two when Appa goes missing? Well, in their attempts to find him, Aang and the gang actually make an incredible poster. Uh, not that one. In actuality, we're talking about this poster. If we translate that poster, the good poster, from Japanese to English, we actually learn that Appa weighs 10 tons. That is a lot. Just for some perspective, the largest land animal in the real world is the African bush elephant. And on average, they only weigh about six and a half tons. Appa is nearly double that amount. That is a whopping amount. A whopping amount, to be exact. Huh? 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 My humor is not appreciated here. So Appa would need a blast of air with over 10 tons of force coming straight up from below. But this is gonna cause a few issues. The air has to come from somewhere after all. Remember, airbenders can't just create air out of nothing. It needs to be sucked in from his surroundings. So if Appa were truly drawing air from around him to generate 10 tons of force, he would create winds of 97,000 miles an hour. 97 thousand miles an hour. The absolute strongest hurricane winds to ever be recorded have only gotten to about 145 miles an hour. It would create a sort of whirlwind effect, all culminating on Appa, and nothing in his general vicinity would be safe. But we know from the show itself that this just isn't how it works. Watch as Appa takes off here. Look at his surroundings. These trees would be ripped out of the ground, and there is no way Toph would be still standing there. I don't care how grounded she is. Get it? Grounded? Because she's an earthbender? Boom ching Okay, so we can rule out the idea that Appa is generating vertical wind. But then, how could it be possible that air currents can lift something that weighs 10 tons off the ground? 
Well, it's actually really not that crazy. In fact, we get much heavier things up into the air every single day, like airplanes. A 737 airplane weighs about 87 tons. In fact, the heaviest aircraft to ever fly weighs in at 710 tons. That's right, 71 times heavier than Appa. Air is just swole. Swoller than me. Need to get to a gym. And believe it or not, the way these behemoths lift themselves into the air is by manipulating the air currents around them. You could say that they are literally bending air, but they didn't get their air bending from a giant lion turtle. No, these planes get their air bending from their wings. Now, I know that's not a mind-blowing revelation or anything, but bear with me, because if we can understand how the wings of a plane lift hundreds of tons into the air, maybe it'll enable us to better understand how Appa's air bending is able to lift 10. There are two major elements that give a wing its lift. The more obvious one is by forcing the air molecules to go downward. According to our old pal Newton, that is going to create upward force on the wing. But if Appa were using that principle alone, it would just create the same hurricane problem that we talked about before, except this time in reverse. But most plane wings also create lift by changing the pressure of the air around it. Generally speaking, a plane wing has a convex curve along the top while staying flat along the bottom. Now, when the air molecules come in and make contact with that wing, some are forced into a bottom path where they all get smushed together against each other, against the bottom of the wing, and against the plane. But another set of molecules are taken along an upward route, along this top convex curve of the plane wing. And because they're now forced to spread out across a larger distance here, it actually creates less pressure on top relative to the bottom, which in turn creates a general lift. As such, the plane goes up. Don't believe me? All right, well, I made my own version of a plane wing. And just by using the standard hair dryer, we can create lift. Let's do this. Science activate. You notice that I'm directing the air directly at the wing, straight on. So the hair dryer is not pushing the wing up from below. Instead, the wing itself is doing the splitting of the air onto those two different paths that we talked about, changing the pressure of the air going over it relative to the pressure of the air going under it, therefore making the wing lift up into the sky like this. It's this basic principle that allows these colossal machines to fly. Do you even lift, bro? And by bro, I mean air? Yes. Yes, it does. Now back to Avatar. In the end, it's not Appa's weight that's the problem here. It's actually his shape. It's not like he has wings to divert the air and create this effect. But maybe he doesn't need wings. I mean, think about it. Plane wings are designed to change the air currents to produce lift. But Appa is an airbender. He can change the air currents in any way that he wants to, no wings necessary. He could easily use his airbending to split the air in front of him. He could force the air molecules apart at will, guide the molecules above him to spread out over a greater distance than the molecules below. He can create whatever difference in air pressure he could possibly want. In the end, Appa can give himself lift by using his air bending to create the same effect a plane's wings have. In fact, planes really only need to have wings because they don't have the power of air bending. Hot take here, but it seems like Appa has a more efficient way of flying than even a plane does. Because as long as he understands the basic concept of how lift works, he can just bend the air to create the effect that he needs, even adjust it on the fly literally and figuratively, without needing any additional wings. So is it possible for Appa, a giant 10-ton six-legged bison, to fly just by adjusting the airflow? Absolutely yes. Quite easily, in fact. That's exactly the way that airplanes do it, by adjusting the airflow. In the end, Appa staying off the ground is ultimately grounded in fact. In the words of a famous scientist from my childhood, science rules!